Good morning, beautiful people. Marie Alessi here. I want to talk to you about your support network today, and it has come about because two things happened within one week with the same son, my firstborn. I can't even begin to tell you what went through my head and through my heart, the shock that I felt when I received a text message from my older son saying, Mom, I hurt my back really badly. And then there were things around like he couldn't bend this way, couldn't bend that way. And my heart just sank because first of all, he's not allowed to text me from school. And I instantly knew that he must be in a lot of pain for me to send him a text message. So I had to redirect him to the office, went through you know, the normal channels and make sure that the office would ring me within a few minutes. I was on the phone and a little bit later, I had him in the car on the way home and my mind was racing because I thought, what do I do with him? You know, do I take him to hospital straight away? Do I go to the GP because I might need a referral for an x-ray? Do I take him to a chiropractor? I, I just went through this entire, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And um, with a back injury you just don't choke around you know so um, and then of course my next thought was Rob would know what to do Rob always knew what to do in case of an emergency he was always the first point of contact he was the first person I would ring and go like babe this and that happened please what do I do I remember this is a very quick side story um, ringing Rob when he was in Melbourne on a business trip and I had this massive spider in my house. And I can tell you it was about that size because that's the size of my jumbo cup and I had to put it over the spider to capture it. So I know exactly how big the spider was. It was not just exaggerating in my shock. I knew that the cup was that big and the legs were still hanging out on the side. So I'm like, <gasps> and it was three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning and I still rang Rob in Melbourne because I knew that he would know what to do so he always knew I don't know how but he always knew and I stay relatively calm when it comes to emergencies so I'm quite proud of that yet I often feel like what's the next thing I often feel like I want um, affirmation that my thought is right or I want somebody else to tell me yes that's absolutely the perfect step to go to Marie and in particular when it comes to to emergencies is something that is really that might potentially be um, I don't want to say life-threatening because I don't want to exaggerate a situation here that uh, wasn't that bad in the end but in that very moment I had no idea what implication his back injury could have so I first of all gave him rest and gave him anti-inflammatory because I thought that would be my first point of call and um, iced his back I'm just thinking how many nurses are sitting there going like oh you shouldn't have done this you shouldn't have done that um, anyway the chiropractor later on told me that I've done the exact perfect thing that he needed in the moment so I was really really happy to hear that but uh, coming back to the chiropractor my beautiful friend Jenny I hope you're watching this I will have to send this to you because you were just so amazing and Jenny is such a beautiful friend of mine and I don't see her as often as I would like to but when something happens, I know that I can always count on her and her doors and her heart is always wide open for us. And she saw him that night and she said he had done a proper job, like muscle spasm, like really par excellence. It was really bad. And over the weekend, she gave me the entire treatment plan of how to massage him and with Annika and magnesium. And he had this um, knot in his back. I could actually feel it when I massaged it out. Um, yeah, so I had to massage him like five times a day and um, gave him a few more anti-inflammatories and um, yeah, the most miraculous part for me was that Flynn was on the soccer field on Monday because, you know, he injured his back four days before he was supposed to start playing soccer and I thought this is not going to happen, but he did. He played soccer on Monday and uh, Jenny actually saw him again on Monday night and gave him the all clear. She said, yep, he's definitely right to play. She said, don't overdo it, but you can play. And I'm like, wow. 
So why am I sharing this story with you? Because not only was I in this state of, oh my God, you know, who do I ask? What's going to happen? And I was really worried about Flynn, but I'm sharing this with you because it is so important for us to have a support network. We all need one. In particular, if you might have lost a partner, it is more the, more important than ever to think about who are the people that you can call in case of emergency. And here's the thing. I don't want you to wait for a case of emergency. I did not want to have to learn the hard way. I worked on that over the years before any of that happened. I knew who the people were that I can count on. I am really big on fostering and nurturing these relationships because these people mean so much to me. And this to me is always a two-way street. I know that whoever I can rely on, my closest friends know they can ring me in the middle of the night and I'd be there. And I want you to think about who are these people in your life right now. I don't want you to wait for a case of emergency. I want you to make yourself a nice cup of tea. I've got mine right here. Grab a journal and think about this. If something was to happen right now, who would be the first person you call? I actually really want you to do this. I want you to write a list of names down who you would call in case of emergency. And you might be surprised that some of those people on the list you might not have spoken to for a really long time. So my call to action for you is that when you have written this list, to contact these people on the list and let them know how important they are to you. Don't wait for a case of emergency. Tell these people now how much they mean to you. Foster these relationships. Nurture those people because obviously they mean a lot to you for their name to be on your list. So I want to keep this super short and simple today because I'd really like you to take action on this. And for those of you who are in a situation right now and like Marie, there's really nobody I can put on this list, I beg to differ without even knowing you. But when you are sitting right here, right now, not knowing who that could be, I urge you to send me a private message right now and I'd be more than happy to sit with you and guide you in the right direction. It doesn't take long. And any of you watching this outside of our movement, Loving Love After Loss, please feel free to join us. There's an entire support network right there for you to hold space for you and to love upon you when you need it the most and when you find it is really, really hard to ask for it. We've all been in this situation. Nobody wants to need help, yet we all do, adversity or not. We are all human beings. We all need help. We all need support. We don't deal well with isolation and we don't heal well in isolation. So with that being said, I'm sending you so much love. Hit the subscribe button, follow us, join us, whatever you do. We're here to support you. Have an awesome day. This is Marie. Bye for now.